There's a lot in this question. Um, and there's a lot of language which has a lot of implications for all this stuff. Okay, so we're going to unpack it together and then you're going to have a shot at going on it on your own. Okay, so if you want you can write down underneath all of your table and stuff like that. Maybe you can write example. And we're having a look at um, a cricket ball that gets thrown vertically upwards. So ball in hand, we just throw it straight in the air because you want to catch it yourself, I guess. And then they give you a model. Remember all that stuff we were talking about with optimization before? So here's a model of the height x in meters at time t seconds. That stuff's really important, so I'm going to write it down right now. That x is in meters, and then t is in seconds. Welcome, grab a seat. So this tells us how uh, displacement and time are related to each other. So let's go ahead and write that down. X equals 20 T minus 5 T squared. So if you know the time, I can tell you the displacement. After some number of seconds, I can tell you where the ball should be up in the air, okay? All right, so now let's start to unpack, like what is this question asking of us? It says, find V, velocity, and A, acceleration, as functions of T, of time, okay? Why don't we do that before we get to the second half of the question, because we can already just start on that right away, okay? Velocity is our first derivative, okay? So I'm going to write V equals, I'll even just to get it cemented in my brain for this early point in time, it's dx on dt, so there's x. Can you help me differentiate with respect to t? What am I going to get? 20, fantastic. Take away 10t, 10t. excellent. So I've differentiated with respect to time once, there's my, um, there's my velocity function, as requested, and then to do the next part, to get to acceleration, I just need to take that guy and differentiate again, just like you have been with your first derivative and second derivative when it has nothing to do with this motion situation. Um, so this is dv on dt, just the line above, and you guys can go ahead and tell me what the derivative is. It's just minus 10, cool. Welcome, grab a seat. <clears throat> All right, so these are the first things. Uh, have a look at the rest of the question. It says, show that the ball is always accelerating downwards. Now, remember I said to you before that direction matters in all of these things, right? So if you look at the acceleration equation right here, maybe I should uh, use some colors to separate things out, right? Here's velocity, and then here's acceleration. What does downwards mean? in this situation, or maybe a better way to ask it is, what about this equation signifies down? Can anyone tell me? Uh, say that again, Max? Negative. Okay, great, so that negative right there indicates down. Now, how do I know that? Look back at the original question. It says, a cricket ball is thrown vertically upwards. Its height, its height is x, right? And height is an upward measurement, okay? We could just as easily say, um, you know, the measurement downward is positive. If, say, you were like digging, you're like a submarine, and like I, the only thing that matters to me is down, so therefore I might make that my positive numbers rather than just have negatives everywhere. But in my situation, they said height, height is measured upwards, so negative is measured downwards. So we can go and we can uh, use some words here to say since A is less than zero, right, acceleration is always downward. Okay, and uh, we've been emphasizing the importance of words this whole um, topic, and this is one of those cases where you cannot avoid using some verbal language to explain what's going on, okay? Now the next bit, I'm gonna um, pause for a minute and let you have a go at this, because they're asking us to now sketch. We've got one, two, three equations, and they'd like us to draw them. Um, now you're gonna get pretty busy on these diagrams, so can I ask you to draw three separate axes? They don't have to be enormous, because luckily for you, this is a fairly easy function that we're starting off with, okay? I think you all know roughly what this is supposed to look like. I'll give you a few minutes to get a head start on me. Um, for those of you who've just arrived, um, you may like to grab a picture of this, because I'm about to get rid of it, because we'll need some space. Um, but for the rest of you, draw those graphs and um, call me over once you finish so that I can have a look and see when you're at the, the right spot. What you can see I've done is I've drawn myself three sets of axes and I have the distinct advantage of um, having already done this question so I kind of know where my axes are going to head um, and you know if you just sort of drew general axes like this, there's nothing wrong with that but you're very rapidly going to um, 
C, that not all of your normal coordinate axes will be relevant to the question, okay? So, for example, let's think about this guy here. The displacement function, let's go one step at a time, okay? X equals 20t minus 5t squared. So hopefully you already recognize generally what kind of shape that's going to be. It's going to be a parabola, and it's not just any parabola, it's a concave down parabola, because the t squared, which is the important part, it's got a negative coefficient, okay? So it's going to be something like this, okay? You can see, and if you didn't do this, it's okay, but it just is easier for my brain anyway. I, I factorized, because factorizing a quadratic helps you find roots real easy, and you kind of need to know where roots are in order to draw the thing, okay? Have a look at this. I factorized it. Here's one factor, here's the other. Each one tells you a root. 5t, what does that factor tell you? Where's the root for that? It's t equals zero, right? What about this one here? t equals four, okay? Now, I hope you hear I'm emphasizing that the roots are t equals something and t equals something else, Remember, it's, which is time, right? So our horizontal axis is no longer our x-axis, it's our time axis. Um, if you want the language for that, the technical language, it's our uh, independent variable, whereas displacement, it depends on time. So it's our dependent variable, okay, which we tend to put vertically. So now I know I've got an intercept at zero, and I've got an intercept, I'm just going to call that four, so I'm just going to mark that in, zero, four. You already told me it's a concave down parabola, right? So I'm guessing it looks something like this, okay? Now hopefully you've got something somewhat like that on your page, or I'll highlight some things that are really important here, okay? When you have a look at this picture, uh, the graph we've done, it sort of looks like someone standing at the origin and then like throwing the ball like to someone off in the distance and then you know they're standing over here and then they catch it, right? But this is not what the situation represents, or well, it's not what the graph represents. Tell me where the ball has been thrown. Look back at the question. The ball has been thrown straight up, right? So even though this graph makes it look like there's some horizontal motion, there is no horizontal motion. This is not like physically going left to right, this is seeing things over time as time progresses, right? So in fact, the ball is going straight up and down, but what you're looking at is where is the ball at particular slices of time, particular instances of time, okay? That's what it looks like, zero to four. Um, there's my x, there's my time. Let's see if we can do our velocity graph, our velocity time graph. Um, we differentiated, we got 20 minus 10t. What kind of graph does that look like? It's a straight line. Can you tell me any more about it? Okay, it's going to have an intercept at 20. That's good. And then what else can you tell me about it? I've got a gradient that's decreasing. Very good. And it's just a straight line, so it goes like that. Okay? It has an intercept, right? Where's that intercept? At 2. Yep. And that's the whole velocity graph. It's done. Okay? Last one, acceleration. And please keep in mind, right? A kind of functions like your y axis, right? So this could be, you could read this as y equals negative 10, except that it's an acceleration axis. So what kind of line is this? We know it's a straight line like the previous one, but it's not just straight. It's, it's a horizontal line. I know that's sneaky, like it's tempting to think, is this vertical or is it horizontal? Because they're so used to seeing x's or y's, right? But that's why you have to label your axes very carefully. That's your vertical axis, so your vertical values are always going to be equal to negative 10, okay? All right, now, uh, let me see how well I've done. Okay, I've tried my best. I want you to notice that on the ends of all of my graphs, all three of my graphs, um, I haven't put arrows. And maybe you haven't put arrows either. Maybe you just kind of drew a line and you're like, I just left it. Um, but it's important that I didn't do arrows because I wonder if you can think back to when we talked about like models that represent reality. Often within the model, even when nothing is said explicitly, there are domain restrictions that exist on your model. There are constraints. Do you remember that? Okay. So as an example, let's have a look at the very first function. X equals this, okay, displacement. Right? Now, if I were to continue using this model, what would the parabola do if I kept on going to the left? Mm, now, according to the model, right, well, I, it doesn't tell you what's happening to the ball. I guess you're just holding it, right? So really what it should do is just be on the ground, right? But that's not what this equation would do. The equation would say, oh, apparently I have a ball that burrowed up from underneath these subterranean caverns and then came up into the, emerged out of the ground, right? That's not what it does though, right? So this model only exists between zero 
and when it lands. You can see I've done the same thing because, um, and stopped it over here because I'm presuming you have not thrown it so hard that when it comes back to Earth, it like burrows into the ground, okay? It's not gonna do that, the model stops, okay? So since displacement only fits in this little range here, um, I've done the same thing for velocity, right? You can see I've ended here at the same spot. I'm calling that four, right? which is why you can see it's about halfway. Um, and then the same thing for this, I didn't write it, but that ends at four as well, okay?